Leia here from LeiaFirstSide.com and in this video I will show you how to name carboxylic acids. A carboxylic acid can be simplified as showing R, which means the rest of your molecule or some carbon chain, bound to a carbonyl carbon which is a C double bound to an O and then single bound to an OH. The carbonyl together with the OH make up your carboxyl functional group so don't confuse this with the molecule that simply has an OH as this is an alcohol, or similar carbonyl containing functional groups such as a C double bound O but an H instead of an O which is an aldehyde, or a C double bound O with another R group which is a ketone. The carboxyl group can also be represented as RCOOH or RCO2H where the two oxygens represent the carbonyl oxygen and the OH oxygen. To name a carboxylic acid, you follow the standard rules for IUPAC naming and simply add oic acid to the end. This is a rare case in IUPAC naming where you have a separation between two words as part of the parent name. One more thing to recognize about the carboxylic acid is that the functional group by definition is terminal and since the carboxyl is a high priority functional group, it will always be number one. Let's start with a simple example by identifying and highlighting the parent chain. Since the carboxylic acid is a high priority functional group, the carboxyl group always gets number one and I number the rest of the molecule accordingly. Having four carbons in my parent chain gives me a first name of butte, only single bonds gives me a last name of ane. Since the carboxyl group shows up a number one, I would include one oic acid. However, the number one is always understood and does not have to be included. And since the suffix starts in a vowel, I drop the E. This gives me a final name of butanoic acid. Let's try this example that has multiple substituents. I first start by identifying and highlighting my parent chain and give carboxyl the number one. Since this is a somewhat complex molecule, I want to make sure that I have all my puzzle pieces in place before putting the name together. A total of six carbons gives me a first name of hex. The pi bond at number three gives me a last name of 3e. My carboxyl functional group gives me the ending oic acid, where the number one is understood and therefore omitted. A one carbon substituent on carbon two gives me the prefix of 2-methyl. And a Cl substituent on carbon five gives me the prefix 5-chloro. Putting the same together, I start with my prefixes in alphabetical order, followed by my first name, last name, and suffix. Since I have a methyl and a chloro substituent, C comes before M, putting the chloro before the methyl. And since the suffix starts in a vowel, I drop the E in ene for a final name of 5-chloro-2-methyl-3-hexenoic acid. Given that this name is long, I will go back to my checklist to ensure that I have all the pieces. That's 5 chloro 2-methyl, 3-hexene, oic acid. When I have more than one carboxyl group on the molecule, they both get highest priority and therefore will assume to be terminal and the numbers do not have to be included. In this case, I start by identifying and highlighting my parent chain. When numbering this chain, I get a number one on the right for a carboxyl and the number one on the left for a carboxyl. However, if I put a two on the right, I don't have any substituents, but a 2 on the left gives me a methyl group, and so I number from the left. 5 carbons gives me a first name of pent, only single bonds in the chain gives me a last name of ane. Since the carboxylic acids are assumed to be first and last, I don't have to include the number, I simply put the suffix dioic acid. A 1 carbon substituent on 2 gives me the prefix of 2-methyl, for a final name of 2-methyl pentane dioic acid. Notice that I didn't drop the E in ane, given that di starts with a consonant. And also recognize that even though I don't have numbers for the two carboxylic acids, the fact that I have pent implies that the first carbon and the last or the fifth carbon are both my carboxylic acids. This concept becomes even more evident when I have a tricky example like this one. My longest carbon chain does indeed have six carbons, however this is not my parent chain. Because the carboxylic acid is such a high priority group, it doesn't matter how many carbons are in the chain as long as you are able to connect carboxyl number one and carboxyl number two 
to make your parent chain. This gives me an unexpected parent chain of only four instead of six carbons, where carboxyl number one is first and carboxyl number two is last. The four carbons give me a first name of but, only single bonds in the chain gives me a last name of ane. Since this is a symmetrical molecule, it didn't matter if I started numbering from the top or the bottom. I have two isopropyl substituents coming off of both carbon 2 and carbon 3. If you're not comfortable identifying the isopropyl group, go back to my video on naming branched substituents, giving me the prefix 2,3-diisopropyl. And my two carboxyl groups give me the ending of dioic acid. Putting this name together, I get 2,3-diisopropyl butane dioic acid. When you have a carboxylic acid coming off a ringed substituent, you simply name the ring as you would, and then add the prefix carboxylic acid. In this case, I have a five-membered ring giving me pent for five and cyclo for the ring. Only single bonds gives me a last name of ane, and a carboxylic acid gives me the ending carboxylic acid. This gives me a final name of cyclopentane carboxylic acid. When you have another carbonyl in your molecule with your carboxylic acid, it automatically gets the lower priority, and regardless of having a ketone or an aldehyde, they both get the prefix oxo. Let's take a look at these two examples. For the first one, we have four carbons, where I have a carboxyl, a number one, and a ketone, a number three. For the second example, I have only three carbons, with the carboxyl getting the number one and the aldehyde getting the number three. The first chain of four carbons gets a first name of but and a last name of ane for only single bonds. The ketone on carbon three gets demoted from the own functional group to the oxo substituent for a prefix of three oxo. And the carboxylic acid, of course, gets the ending oic acid. For my second example, three carbons gives me a first name of prop, only single bonds gives me a last name of ane. An aldehyde on carbon 3 gets demoted from the al functional group to the oxo substituent for a prefix of 3 oxo, and of course the ending, oic acid. And so I get an interesting phenomenon. The first molecule has a final name of 3 oxo butanoic acid, and my second molecule gets a final name of 3 oxo propanoic acid. What you want to recognize here is that your non carboxyl carbonyl gets the prefix oxo, and the way you identify between a ketone or an aldehyde is simply by where it shows up on the parent chain. So what do you do if you're given a name that has two oxos in it, but doesn't tell you if it's an aldehyde or ketone? Remember, the difference is simply where it shows up in the molecule, and so when you draw it, if it happens to come out at the end, it's an aldehyde. If it happens to come out in the middle, it's a ketone. We identify the first name, which tells me I have a 5-carbon parent chain and only single bonds from the last name, ane. Since my suffix is oic acid, I know that I have a carboxyl functional group on carbon number 1, and I can draw this on the right or the left. Once I determine where the carboxyl group is situated, I number starting from that side. I have two oxo substituents located on carbon 3 and carbon 5, so I'll simply add a double bound O and see where that shows up. On carbon 3, given that it's the middle of the molecule, I recognize it as a ketone. And carbon 5, given that it's the end of the molecule, I recognize that to be an aldehyde. And so you have it. Don't let the apparent complexity of a name fool you. Instead, simply apply the puzzle piece concepts backwards by first identifying your first and last name, finding your functional group, and adding your substituents. In future videos, we'll look at how to name derivatives of carboxylic acids, including esters and amines. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, download my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry, using the link below, or visit layofersci.com slash orgo secrets. That's O-R-G-O secrets. For information regarding online tutoring, visit layofersci.com slash orgo tutor. That's O-R-G-O tutor. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and even share it with a friend or two. If you have any questions regarding this video, 
leave a comment below or contact me through my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Leah There will be many related videos posted over the course of the semester, so go ahead and click the subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss out.